what happens to sugar and insulin levels when you eat a steak well believe it or not your ability to put away sugar increases but despite this improvement your glucose levels won't take it up the reason insulin puts away the groceries this is his job description and amino acids are a grocery now most of the time when insulin is being talked about the focus is on glucose but he is responsible for putting away amino acids too and this can be a treacherous thing the problem amino acids are substrates for gluconeogenesis that is they can be turned into glucose creating a conflict of interest if amino acids get into the liver and switch on glucose production glucose would be pouring out the back door while insulin is shoving the glucose in through the front door organized chaos now one could argue this is actually what happens when you're metabolically broken you see the signal to turn off production of sugar is faulty so there's dietary sugar plus continued endogenous glucose production which adds up to a sugar spike of gargantuan proportions so putting away amino acids requires a little juggling join us for this episode of better body chemistry tv as we look at what really happens when you eat a protein rich meal better body chemistry tv is brought to you by dr sandy a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins hef lumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry remember small things can make a big difference to your health now if you're eating a protein rich meal glucagon comes along for the ride now despite rumors to the contrary glucagon has very little interest in glucose he's an amino acid me i mean hormone at heart he pops out of the pancreas encouraging the liver to install amino acid gates so that more amino acids can be taken up thus helping insulin put away amino acids safely and in the process the disposal of sugar improves by as much as 25% This is what a team of Australian researchers recently uncovered when they did an oral protein tolerance test. <laughs> Never heard of it? Okay, okay. There is no such thing. What there is is an oral glucose tolerance test or OGTT for short. In the test, a person is required to down an insipidly sweet solution of glucose, and the rise and fall of their glucose levels is then monitored. In normal healthy folks the sugar spike is small and within 2 hours the sugar levels are back to normal in someone with metabolic issues the sugar spike is much bigger and lasts for a whole lot longer now in the oral protein tolerance test of our study the glucose was switched out and in its place was 75 grams of whey protein isolate that's the equivalent of 3 medium sized steaks since the subjects participating in the study were ordinary folks not the winners of an eating contest the protein drink was consumed in 3 installments of 25 grams each over an hour one at the start one at 30 minutes and one at 60 minutes then everything was tracked the protein ingestion had no effect on plasma glucose but there was a rapid and sustained insulin response protein ingestion also caused an increase in glucagon levels there was a difference in how the two hormones behaved the insulin peaked after about an hour returning to baseline whereas the glucagon took a whole lot longer to hit its high which happened around the 2 hour mark and it wasn't back to normal when the study ended 4 hours later now the question is what happened to all the groceries well the team tracked the individual amino acid here is the plot for leucine this is the amino acid that dominates whey protein all the amino acids behaved in the same way and it was clear that they had begun to be put away but at the 4 hour mark there was there was still some way to go to get them all safely tucked away this study was not able to say where the amino acids had actually gone 
some had definitely ended up in the liver where they had been chopped up this was reflected by an increase in urea so what happened to the sugar well in this study there was none in the drink so our team infused glucose in at the same time as the volunteers were gorging on their whey protein shake but the glucose they infused was a glow-in-the-dark version. It had been labeled with a special isotope, which allowed the team to track what happened to these specific glucose molecules. And they found the more of these glucose molecules went in. Now, odds are they went into fat and muscle cells, since neither of these cells respond to glucagon. Now, the take-home message, if you're struggling to keep your sugar levels in check, have steak with that potato. In the real world, the odds of having a protein-only meal is rather unlikely. We always mix and match our micronutrients. Well, we should. Obeying the rule of thirds will help create better body chemistry. Now, too much insulin is not a good thing. But there's no need to worry about the insulin response elicited by the protein portion of your meal or the fact that protein causes gluconeogenesis because, well, glucagon is leading the charge. He's complementing insulin, not opposing him during dinner. Working together, they get the job done, which is why adding protein is one of the strategies of the candy floss system designed to help you tame your sugar gremlin. To learn about some of the other strategies, download our Willpower Report. It's free. And begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website and browse our library or sign up for a one-on-one -on -one health conversation if you need help getting to the bottom of your body chemistry issues. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who's battling to control their sugar levels? Share this video with them so they understand the benefits of adding protein to their meals. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.